Hey there, Raven Clan and friends. This is the Dwarf Fortress tutorial series. In today's tutorial, we're going to go over preparing carefully. Now, start immediately to default skills, equipment, and animals. That's a pretty decent way. It'll give you the necessary stuff that you want to do. If you go over here, it's enemies off, which is decent. You can always go into custom settings as well. You can, when it comes to custom settings, you if you have a problem with Wear Beast, you can turn off your Wear Beast right here. That's where you can turn off Wear Beast. If you were having a problem with uh, your first raid, you can you can make it start way later, so on and so forth. This is very complicated, and there's a lot of numbers on the screen, but for the most part, it's just the population trigger. And en enemies will appear at the population of these, so on and so forth. The enemy production is at when your production's at these numbers. It's all background numbers other than the population, of course. And if you're having trouble with the game, you can always fiddle with this or play around with this if you wanted. A big thing that I would suggest to a lot of people is Wear Beast. Because I know a lot of people, myself including, Wear Beast can be very, very, very terrifying when you don't know a lot about Dwarf Fortress. In fact, you can just turn off you can just turn off enemies in general, just play a, a nice, happy, fun game. Now, economy being hard, I haven't tried that yet, but I'm actually really wanting to because I get very, very powerful very early on in this game. Anyways, let's go to prepare carefully. Now, this screen, again, if your screen doesn't look like mine, go to my first tutorial where we talk about the UI. For starters, I like, I like to make sure that I have at least two competent miners because you're always going to be mining. You're always going to need somebody to mine. And why we go with two is because you start off with two picks. You start with, off with two picks. Now, not saying that you need two woodcutters, which in fact, I'd say you wouldn't need two woodcutters. You're not going to be, especially if you're in a biome that doesn't have any trees, you're not going to be needing any of the woodcutting. If you're in a biome that doesn't have any trees, you can just take off the axes. But that's besides the point. Next, I like to do a carpenter. I like to get a nice competent carpenter and we like to put two points into woodcutting. Again, you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what I like to do. Next, I like to do a fisher dwarf. Especially since we're next to water, having a fisher dwarf is very nice to have. Next, we like to have a farmer dwarf, which can also be a brewer and a butcher. But we can also make the fisher dwarf a butcher, but we're not going to because we're going to do something very fun with the fisher dwarf. I'll explain that here in a second. So I'm just going to make this guy an adequate butcher and do his skills later. Next, we're going to make sure that we have somebody that can do some blacksmithing. Now, a lot of Blacksmithing is like all your different tools, you know, anvils, making tools, different things with metal. We're going to make sure that we have a adequate furnace operator and a very, very good armor smith because getting armor early on will make sure that you're protected. So I like to make sure that I have a metal smith. And then the last dwarf I like to do is just make it a crafter, a very competent stone crafter so on and so forth a very 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 good crafter dwarf so now you see that there's still more skills on these guys if i go over to my fisher dwarf i like to go and you can see these tabs over here this is just more labors this is just more like you can make your fisher dwarf a fish dissector we're gonna make him adequate at that and if you want, you can go ahead and sign them some combat skill. One thing that's really good for all dwarves is observer. This is how they learn. This is how, when they go into, when, this, okay. When, when dwarves go into a squad, they will be an observer, especially if they don't have any skills. If they're a really good observer, they're going to learn skills a little bit better. Now, for a fisher dwarf, we're going to make sure that he is a diagnostician so that he can be our doctor. Now, you don't need to do this, but I find having a doctor early on means I don't have to wait for a doctor. And a diagnostician means that somebody will actually be able to look at something very, very well. In fact, we're just going to make adequate and then get wound dresser. He doesn't have to be a great doctor. He just needs to be a good, like a decent doctor. For our miners, I like to make sure our miners, not only our miners, but our big beefy dudes. So... 
we're going to go ahead and do Hammer Dwarf, because hammers are nice. They're already using a type of hammer to mash away rocks. We're also going to get a armor user and a dodger. Say with him. Except instead of dodger, we're going to make him a teacher, a competent teacher so that he can teach, so that she can teach her skills to other people. Next, we're going to go into our woodworker. I want to make sure that the woodworker can also do some herbalism. Not only some herbalism, but also some ambushing in, in case we want them to do some type of hunting. Next, we want to make sure that our farmer has a good idea of record keeping so that we can have a booker, a book, a bookkeeper, somebody that can make sure our stocks are decent. Next, we're going to have a metalsmith, our metalsmith to do mechanic. We're going to make sure that they do mechanics so that we have a engineer, somebody that can make the drawbridges or at least have a have an idea of more skill into making the drawbridges. And I was thinking about making them a leader, which we always could, but instead of, we're gonna make sure our metalsmith also gets weaponsmithing. Our craft dwarf is gonna be our manager. So we're gonna have organizer, organizer and appraiser. No, nope. organizer and let's just give them leader, just a throwaway. Now, now that those skills have been made, let's go into these. So here's your items. Here's what you're gonna be starting off with. Now, a lot of you are probably going to see all this and be like, man, why do I need these crutches and splints? You're right. Just go ahead and get rid of them. You can make them fairly easily. Just like the buckets, just go ahead and get rid of them. You can make them very easily. Le leather quivers? Uh, you could just start off with one. You know, obviously, you don't have a lot of dwarves that can do any marksmen, but you can just go ahead and get rid of that or just start with one. I like to make sure that I at least have one quiver just in case. Now, as far as bags... You can go on with bags, but you don't need bags yet. You can you can start off with bags, but it's totally fine if you get rid of your, your plant bags, especially once you get your, your first trade, you can just go ahead and trade for a bunch of bags. Now, I like to make sure that I have at least 20 plump helmet, or so plump helmets are your main suit food source. Yes, you can have meat, fish, but plump helmets are going to make sure that you get quite a lot of seeds from them for the plump helmet spawn in fact you can leave this at five because you're br you're bringing in a lot of plump helmets now i like to make sure that i have a decent amount of food and a lot of ale we're gonna make sure that we have at least a hundred ale a hundred drinks for our dwarves because they get thirsty we're also gonna go in with an extra set of tools just in case once we get some migrants that they'll actually have tools especially if they don't bring any of them Make sure that you start off with an iron anvil because the steel anvil, we're going to go down to tools, which is where anvils are at. We're going to type in anvil and you can see that the steel anvil is worth 300 points. These points are very precious. And I also like to make sure that I have at least extra cloth just in case our dwarves use some of the cloth or whatnot, especially if you make a mistake trying to make crafts and you make cloth crafts instead of rock crafts or something like that. I've done it before. It's annoying. Anyways, we're going to go into animals. Animals are very important in this game. I would say if, if you're starting in a in a more dangerous biome like a untamed wilds or maybe of anything other than than evil biome, of course, I'm good. I was just making sure we didn't have any cool animals. I would make sure that we that you would start out with a war dog. War dogs are very, very, very powerful. And with enough of them, you can do a lot of damage with some war dogs. But for our case, we're just going to get some regular dogs, just two of them. And we're going to get two cats because they get rid of a lot of the the vermin of the pest in the, the fort. Now, you got to be careful with cats because if they start breeding a whole lot, you're going you're gonna to have an even worse problem. You're going to have a cat problem and you're never gonna be able to get rid of them. So you gotta make sure that you help the cat population quite a bit. Anyways, uh, we also have bunny rabbits and I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna get a buck and a doe. Well, we're gonna get a few does and I'm gonna also get a bird so that we can also have some eggs. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a chicken. Why not? I never do chickens. I always do like ducks or something. Okay, there we go. There's, there's some, some animals. Now, we can do some other animals considering we have tons and tons and tons of points left, which I'm going to go ahead and get some alpacas. We're going to get one male, as you can see, and one female. And let's go into here and deposit all of our points into here. Now, 
if you really want, you can go ahead and get yourself some armor or whatever you might think that you might want. I like I like to make sure that I have the stuff for artifacts. So we're gonna go into metal bars and we're just gonna get just a just a couple copper bars. Small cut gem, the cheapest that we can find, which seems to be 40. I'm just gonna do that. Leather, we're gonna get a few things of leather. Also, another thing that you can do is that one cheese will come with a barrel. So if you want a lot of barrels, just get a lot of cheese. It's it's a it's a cheese of sorts that you can do. So that's five barrels that we're gonna be coming in with that. Very, very nice. I'm also gonna get some quick lime. I'm gonna get some gypsum plaster which you can trade for later. I'm also gonna get some sand and some clay. That way we can have whatever we could possibly need as far as materials go for our dwarves. Now, they're also gonna want some dyes and whatnot. There, There's a chance for that, but dyes are also fairly easy to get. In fact, all of this stuff is fairly easy to get, except for maybe the quick lime, the gypsum plaster, the sand and clay. Especially if you don't have a biome that has any of that. It's very important to get those things. So we're just going to go through here and add what we need to add to get all the points left. Cool. Now that you have that, you can go ahead and go into the fortress name, which is down here. This is your different symbols and names that you're going to be seeing throughout your playthrough. What we have here is cried flags. I'm going to go clear, clear, and we're going to do start hot fortress. Start fortress. Cut good shot. That is our fortress name. You can go into your group name and you can just go ahead and randomize as well. The sculpted gem of riddles, even treasury, the superior crafts. That sounds fantastic. Me, Kol Shrimrugoth. Let's go ahead and go with that. And then group symbol. If you really want to go RP, you can go ahead and make your group symbol here. And this group symbol will actually be engraved in your, your future engravings of, of around the fortress. In fact, one of my forts of beer beards, if you want to check out that that series, I'm gonna have a nice little note in the in the corner of the video. In beer beards, it was a symbol of a dwarf filleting a black bear. And when I engraved everything, that's what you saw was a dwarf filleting a black bear. People loved it. So if you want to go into that, you can. Very fun. We're going to embark. And that's it for this tutorial. If you like this tutorial and you want to see more like this, please consider liking and subscribing and let me know down in the comments what you liked about this tutorial and what you want to see next. I'll see you guys in the next one.